Hey everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Not No Podcast. Coming up in this episode, is Amazon Alexa about to go paid? Are you sure your iPhone isn't listening to you all the time? And X is banned in Brazil. Thanks Elon. Make sure to stick around until the end for our AI generated weekly themed outro song. Welcome to the Not Null Podcast. I'm just an AI voice. But here are your real hosts, Kevin Doyle, Paul Bratslavsky, and Bobby Davis. Hey, in stories of things we didn't know we needed, but we have to have, did you know that we're going to have to start paying for Alexa or our Echoes are going to be a paid service? So my question to the guys here, hey, do you have Echo? And second, would you pay five to ten dollars a month, they don't really know yet. They're just they're just putting some feelers out there. Is it? It's, not, it's five. It's ten. Could be twenty. We don't know. So, would you pay for Echo, an AI? No. no. Um. Here's 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 my problem. With this whole thing. Like, I'm guessing they're obviously making us pay, right? Because they're putting AI into it, and we know mm-hmm. we've talked about this a million times on this podcast. There is a cost associated with generative AI. It does not come free. Um, every single query has to go through a compute time, which costs money. Therefore, if they're going to put it in there, which they should, I definitely think they should because it's so far behind. They have to shove it in there. They also then have to charge for it. Do I want to pay for it? No. Will I pay for it? No, because I'm going to choose another (laughs) AI assistant, right? That's not going to be Echo. I'm just not going to do it because here's the other problem too, and this is going to be the hardest sell. This is probably the hardest thing they've ever tried to sell. Yep. Because they've given it away for a decade. This has been a decade free product that they're now going to be like, oh, yeah, now we're going to have to charge for it. It's such a difficult thing to go from free to paid. It's just ridiculously difficult to do that. Um, I'm not sure they're going to be able to do it. I've read a couple of articles about, like, you know, this is obviously going to be an automated AI assistant, you know, and they're talking about the AI assistant part of it. And people think, oh, an AI, AI assistant. <laughs> you know, the reason I say it twice is because. They think the AI is going to generate these assistants on demand or it's like a magic box and whatever you ask, it can connect to anything kind of like Skynet. Um, and I've read some technical blogs on this and basically Amazon is having to write all the connectors. It do, it's not AI in the traditional sense that they're actually having to make all this connectivity. And they said the number one problem, and I'll ask you, Paul, you, you're in charge, you know, you do product education and things like that was discoverability of features that no one knew even what the current Echo is. And now you're going to pay <laughs> for a device that you still doesn't know what all can it do. You know, it's like, and I'm sure you can discover lots of things, but you have no idea. There's no screen. There's no help button. There's no fantastic DevRel guy that runs a YouTube channel, things I can do with my Echo after 30 or anything like that. That's so. a good idea. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that. <laughs> So good, good market right there, you know, yeah. um, to fail on. Uh, and this is um, kind of taking a step back and being like, why are all the companies are, you know, starting to charge for all this AI services? And maybe because they might have went over on investing in AI and not seeing any profit. And they're like, we invested in the infrastructure. We got all this stuff. And now we got to recoup some of this money. So let's shove this into every possible service available. And I'm kind of curious, like, does this mean that like, if you do this as a service that when they make this change, you're no longer have access to it. I think there'll be a free one. And then the other one, the new one's called remarkable. It's called <laughs> remarkable AI, which is also the name of a tablet, but you know, um, the other thing that's kind of odd and I, and I read more into this and it's not as odd once I read into it, I mean, Kevin, we're talking earlier this morning about it. They're using Claude for the AI. They have an in-house AI called Titan, and they're using Claude for this because Claude was faster. And I'm like, man, they're not even using their own tech. But then I realized, oh, they've actually put $4 billion in Anthropic. Wow. And so like, yeah. they've invested enough into Anthropic like Microsoft's invested into OpenAI. So they're following the same um, game that Microsoft's doing. They've bought a third party. Um, oddly enough, um, uh, Google has invested two billion in anthro- Anthropic as well, so that's where Anthropic gets their money from, and that's why they have Cloud AI out there. And of course, Cloud AI runs on AWS, so I'm sure they're getting free AWS, like OpenAI gets next to free Azure. But 
eventually, isn't this game going to, isn't at some point, do they say, we got to start paying for this somehow or we can't use this? Where does this go from here? Well, yeah, but that's what they're trying to do here, right? By having this subscription attached to it. But how many of those free customers are they going to convert to include this paid thing? I just don't think it's many. Right. Now, there's the other move that I also read about Echo, the ecosystem, the current one, that was kind of interesting. Like, I read a story where Amazon doesn't even know how many active users they have on Echoes because you can take Echoes off the network. So it doesn't listen all the time. So people are really concerned about it listening all the time. And we'll we'll get to that in a second, <laughs> you know, like, and so they didn't even know how many active users they really have on a daily basis, uh-huh. which is weird for an Amazon as big as they are. And they were unsure how many of these are out there. So they I'm sold. Not, I'm not convinced that's true. I was going to yeah. say, I don't, I'm not buying it at all because. I'm not buying that. Yeah. Echo device. I've learned the first the- thing is that even when it's not plugged into the network, it uses yes. Bluetooth Wi-Fi to. Yes. with the net of other devices like my neighbor's echo and then those and listens to everything so as long as you have that no no it's not a native it's a mesh up. it's a mesh network it, it, it is, is a mesh no it is it a mesh is. it's designed it's to be exactly, that way it's exactly like, what it it's is it's like the iphones have okay. that same yeah, yeah the iphones have that same technology to communicate with each other in the background it's like yeah. i didn't put a cat this is exact actually like what it is uh you know what i mean uh so yeah, it's kind of hilarious uh that people think they get privacy with the echo devices but that's like no you don't so what would it have to do to get your $10 a month? Um, what, is the, what is the killer feature? Like, what is it that it... There like, isn't one. Yeah, I mean, because you can turn your lights on and off with voice, which you can do that already now with a Hue integration or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Do you think they'll start saying, oh, the Hue integration is only on the paid network? No. No, I think that'll be continued in the free part. I think it'll do whatever it does now continue to do that because like i said going from free to paid if that's like it's going to be a hard sell for people i think the advantage that they have is they've sold a lot of devices right because they're yeah. cheap and they've historically been cheap so they're already there yeah the hardware people already have so it's like they have a large potential customer base already because they don't have to buy new hardware to use this thing but it's no different than just what chat gpt can do right now on your phone it's not it's it's generative ai it's not going to be able to do anything any different until they write all these hooks into these other things I, which yeah who knows when that's going to be because none of the ones can do like chat gpt they have these things right where they what they do they did then they do like a, a vrbo or an airbnb one or something or they, they they had these little little side apps that you can like hook into it well amazon needs to do that they have to differentiate themselves that way because just to have generative AI in here for ten bucks a month, I, I'm not interested. I think like the basic expectation that all these companies with AI are trying to set is basically we have AI in our thing, and that means a subscription for you. So basically, there is going to be no <laughs> free services, and they're just trying to set the precedents, being like, hey, you want anything AI related, even if it sucks, like it's whatever how much is going to cost ten bucks a month. So. Because I feel like all these companies, they haven't really recuperated or made any money off the initial AI investment. So now what's happening, like in every company, like on the stock market, they're like killing it. Uh, You look at NVIDIA, but at a certain point, if you realize that you invested all this money, but there's no return coming in, that's going to start to affect these companies. And so they kind of have to start to now create the strategy. We've invested this much money. How can we... And that's what you hear talks like, oh, it's going to replace developers. It's going to do this. It's going to do this because they're trying to reach for things like to be like, how can we justify the money we spent on the return that we're still waiting on? Because none of these companies are, you know, actually profitable yet, you know, like at least in the think. AI space for sure. Yeah, in yeah. the AI space. Mm-hmm. It's just like too much. Uh, but although I think I could see them making a lot of money, especially you said that they're going to call this next service remarkable. So if they change their free service to unremarkable, I would actually consider, because I don't want to be unremarkable. And so for extra $10 True. to make myself feel better. True. It like push like you down. Blue check. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. If they, a that's, little blue check. Yeah, I want a blue check. <laughs> no, it's the opposite of a blue check. It's like it's insulting you if you don't pay. Is yeah, what it's doing. That is a good <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. I'm like, all right, I want to only make insulting videos on my YouTube channel if you want to find like... You this is like subscribe. one of those things when you, right, when you don't want somebody to buy something, you call it like, oh, you want the... Um, you want the, uh, the <laughs> copper package? That's yeah, 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 we, have the, exactly. we have the platinum want package the, uh, over here. This is amazing. You, you want the? You sure you want the copper? Yeah, package? we have this uh, rusty <laughs> copper dirt written 
package. Exactly. Yeah. Right sounds below like, the. Sounds like something from Fallout, you know, the rusty. It is. Yeah, you just insult the low tier package <laughs> and that hypes up the, the other one. That's so funny. That's so let me ask you a question. Do you think the integrations, because the integrations say they want to simplify our life and they always show me one that I would never do, which is like order airline tickets, which is not like, I don't do that all the time. And it's like a, like the CEO demos the, the thing that he wants, which is all these CEOs do it. Like, yeah, I'm on like 42 flights a month. So I need an assistant that does this, even though they have enough money to pay actual people to do it. They feel like everyone else has that same problem. And I haven't seen a problem yet that AI solves that like, wow, okay, that's kind of cool. And as I'm thinking about it, do you think there's an integration into another app? Like they say, we're going to like code with these things. Do you think they could like, Hey, Echo, write me an app, connect over to my PC, put inside a Visual Studio, write me a landing page for my new product idea. And it shows up over there. Is that, to me, that's the only thing that it could do. It's got to be more Jarvis-like than just ordering me my medicine for the month or something like that, or send send me an alarm to wake me up at 6 a.m. Or But that stuff it can do already. I know. That stuff, that, 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 I wonder that, if we got to start paying for that. That's what I'm wondering if that's what they're going to do. I hope not. Because Premium. that's just going to... Well, what's going to happen is all that's going to happen then if that if that is the case is going to create a whole bunch of e-waste because there's a lot of people that will be getting rid of their dot devices but what do you get then if it's already going to do the integrations that you have for free there's got to be some new ones on the ten dollar a month no, plan that you can't not. get i guarantee you it's just the generative ai part it's the that part you can that ask it a question and it'll talk back yeah. to you yeah because that's what it doesn't do now it doesn't yeah. do any of that stuff now it's terrible at answering questions it's always needed to be better at that kind of stuff. It'll just tell you it either can't or doesn't know or whatever it is, or it'll answer it terribly. It's just going to answer those questions better. That's it. I guarantee you that's going to be it. So it's going to say, tell me a fact about the Roman Empire. You know, yeah. That, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And right now it's going to be like, oh, I can't do that. And that, then in the future with the $10 version, it's going to be like, sure, yeah. and it'll make up something. <laughs> You're only going to get unremarkable answers from me right now. <laughs> but for extra $10 a month, I'm going to tell you a bunch you of remarkable, remarkable things. Paul. Yeah, exactly. I can make yeah. you remarkable, Paul. I, 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 yeah. Exactly. Um, who's the voice for I'm Echo? Sure. Is it is it really the guy from Breaking Bad? I heard that. I don't, I don't use Echo. So you guys tell me, is it? I don't know what the voices are. I have some generic... Whatever it came with voice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's what I got. Someone oh. told me it was Gino Esperito. What is that guy's name? The the villain. Oh, really? Breaking? Yeah. That's I funny. don't know. Okay. Maybe it just sounds like him. I don't know. There's a male version maybe that sounds like him. I yeah. don't know. Mine's just a generic female voice. Yep, that's what I, I would no you pay the ten dollars a month to get Scarlett Johansson's voice in it? <laughs> I don't or know. Like, <laughs> okay. First of all, so, I I'm the, trying to find a feature that I know, you can you're sell working here. Hard. No, there's nothing, there's, so here's what I'm thinking: like you look I'm at working like, hard, Amazon. I'm trying. <laughs> no, <laughs> people are already tired of like this, like overwhelming, you know, subscription model. Because you have like, I want to watch this show. Oh, do I have this service available? I want to do this, and so now every thing that you interact with is offering some sort of subscription service. So it's like you, at some point, you have to pay. So. Like for me, like I use a bunch of products and I literally just pay for two different uh, subscriptions and then that's it. And that's my limit. And if I want to get another one, like I got to cancel the other one. Otherwise, it's like you're going to have 10, 20 different apps that you're using and they all require their own different subscription. And then you can't buy yeah. a house. Like what's happening? You know, <laughs> you're only going to need one AI assistant, right? It's either going to be ultimately you're going to get one. It's either going to be never going to happen. Um, um, Alexa, or it's going to be Siri, or whatever it's going to be. Now, for me, because I'm in the Apple ecosystem, it's probably going to be Siri. Now, whether that ends up being free or not, I'm still hedging my bets that it's not going to be free. They haven't said Apple Intelligence is going to be free, and they haven't said it's going to be paid. But I'm guessing, based on the fact that Amazon feels the need to have a paid Alexa, that Siri is going to be the same. There's going to be this free tier, and there's going to be this advanced tier. And it's probably going to be 10, 20 bucks a month or whatever, or maybe part of the Apple subscription. But I think it's coming, and I'm not going to have both. I just don't need no. to have both, and I'm not going to pay for both. So I think we've all had this discussion at some point over the past decade, right, with our friends, with our family, with, with just people we've chatted to. But um, at some point, we've all been convinced that our phones are listening to us and serving us ads. And we all have an anecdotal story about this, right? It's like, I was talking to my friend about this one thing. Two minutes later, I saw an ad on Instagram about this. So we've all been in that situation. We, 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 we've all been we've been shown an ad at least once. I guarantee everyone has their own story about this. 
So, however, the explanation for this, and there's always been a, a, like deniability around this, right? From everybody. Facebook denies this. Google denies this. All the places you've seen it all deny this even exists. They claim they do not listen to your phone to serve you ads. It's always blamed on what is um, like targeted advertising, right? Via digital fingerprinting is what they call it. So they've always said it's a combination of a whole bunch of different factors, things like location data. So basically where you frequent, right? Your actual location, your social profiles. So everything that you've ever posted on a, on a social media profile, your social connections, it knows who you're connected to. And then it knows also all of their information around this. So it knows their location, their profiles, all of their information as well. Your, um, like your IRL connections, like who your spouse is, who your family members are, and how much time you spend with them based on location data. They have a location profile. You have a location profile. It knows when you're together. It knows when you're apart. It's building a pretty decent picture of you, right? Um, your demographics, how much money you make, where you live, what kind of car you drive. Um, th that basically matches the target audience and you get served ads based on that target audience. If it thinks you're a rich guy in your 50s, it might show you Corvette ads, right? That's kind of the intention. That's the idea. Um, and then obviously, obviously your prior search history and your online history. So they have all of that information. They have a pretty good profile of what you like might want to buy. Therefore, they say, we know what you want to buy sometimes before you even know you want to buy it and we'll serve you an ad based on that. So that's always the thing that we've that we've been told, right? And there's also this level of something called I didn't know what this was called until today, and I looked it up. It's called the the Beta Meinhof effect, and this is basically that frequency illusion. So this is the thing where you go and buy a red Jeep, and all of a sudden you notice, man, there's a lot of red Jeeps on the road, yep. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's like that confirmation bias. Um, you notice something more often after you've learned about it. So you tend to notice these ads after you start looking for them, right? You start talking about something, you notice it. What you don't notice is the hundreds of ads that you've got that don't quite match that criteria, I guess. So this is until this week when a uh, pitch deck leaked from a company called Cox Media Group. And they have a product that is called Active Listening. And guess what Active Listening does? Exactly <laughs> active what listening it says. <laughs> uses artificial intelligence to capture real-time intent data by listening to our conversations. This presentation also says that this company partners with Google, Amazon, and Meta, or Facebook marketing partner. What they don't say is they don't say that these three companies or these three brands use active listening. Now, since this came out, uh, people have reached out to those three companies and they have denied using active listening, or in some cases, denied even partnering with this company. <laughs> <laughs> which Call like just yes. just massive deniability like straight out of the gate like we don't know who they are we don't use them they're not on our vendor list that's what google did apparently <laughs> we just denied having been connected with them at all hit um, too close to home they're like we have our <laughs> own service that does this what are you talking about <laughs> maybe they've always denied this right and i'm thinking so so my thinking is well maybe that's why they've always been able to deny it because all they've done is they've just given it to a third party company who's done it and they've just always had like plausible deniability like we're not listening. And it's like, true, they're not listening. Somebody else is kind of on their behalf. Mm. So, so w w what do you guys think? Are you in the, are you in the, do they listen camp? Or are you in the, no, it's just a really good social profile. 100% they're listening. I've had so many experiences that like you'd be silly to deny. I had a random person come to me at the coffee shop because they saw that I was coding and I was building like a project. Like, oh, you could shoot me a SaaS project. And we were talking about development stuff. And then, because I was like, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore about development. I was like, oh, like, started asking him random stuff about the neighborhood. And then I go to him, like, like, uh, like what he does. He asked me what I do. So I told him I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And if uh, you ever interested in classes, you know, you should try it. And he's like, oh, I don't do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. That's not something I considered. And then he went and sat down. Three minutes after, he comes up to me, shows me his phone. And he's like, look at this. Brand it's a jujitsu ad on his phone. How he never done jujitsu before, had no interest until he talked to me. So if someone tells me it's a coincidence, I don't care. It is pretty crazy coincidence because one of the schools listed was like a school that I was uh, working at at the time. And I was just like, oh, this is, just, this is ridiculous. But uh, 
So yeah. knew you who was talking, knew where you worked and served the right ad to that guy. Yeah, yeah, which is that's insane. that's what they would tell you. Yeah. That's what they would tell you about the social profile part. They would say that they had location data based on you two guys in that same place at the same time. They knew what you did, so if they served the ad to this other guy after you talked about it, not, and not that it listened. Which is insane. I'm with you, Paul. I'm like, it's listening. It's right? totally it's listening. Listen. Are you kidding Here's, me? All right. Let me, let me, let's go down to the scary land version of this thing. So if, if some random marketing company has active listening on, does that mean the NSA has active listening on every phone in America? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, yeah. 100%. Well, well, here's the thing in this. Yes, because here's the thing. Look what it says in this presentation, by the way, too. It says, AI collects and analyzes this behavioral and voice data from 470 plus sources. What I take that to mean is there are 470 different tie-in applications that this thing has the ability to listen to. Right. So think any messaging app, anything, basically any app on your phone that you've given rights to listen to your microphone. They're selling that. They're data tied into it. Yeah. So this is like this. Yeah. It's crazy. What was the Facebook Analytics or whatever? What was that company? It's Cambridge Analytics. Cambridge it's Analytics. Just, it's yeah. all over again, right? So it's just a different form of data that they're sending back to all yeah. these guys. Okay. Yeah, I think they're listening for sure. <laughs> so like, you know, <laughs> I think every app you've ever allowed to listen is somehow feeding that data back. Right. Which is a lot. If you've ever gone through your phone and realized how many apps you've actually allowed to listen to your microphone and look at your photos and the rights that you've given those apps, there's lots of them. If you have 100 on your phone, at least half of them listen to your mic, whether they need to or not. Probably for the purpose of this. Yeah, exactly. So they can sell that data back to yep. somebody. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely pretty, listening, Kevin. Pretty, pretty well. I had a friend. He <laughs> built like a little app, like for fun, which basically will look through your phone photos and it will automatically categorize them based on the picture that the AI recognizes. And I was like, oh, that's a cool app. But then it got me thinking, like, I guarantee you, they're already doing this on our phones, where they are able to kind of again collect more information based on the type of photos you take. Which is insane. Hundred percent. It's crazy. We've given away all of our rights on our devices. Really. Listen, I need to watch cat of, videos kind of on just... YouTube without any disruptions. So I don't know. <laughs> right. With AI being able to summarize, like my exactly. Videos. Yeah. No. Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, again, we've all had these instances. I think for me, it's always been the ones where, like yours, Paul, where it feels too close to be like just coincidence or some other profile like social thing that happened right because it's like it can be a minute two minutes after you've talked about something it's like you get the ad it's like while i understand that's a thing and maybe there is some biases in there that i hadn't thought about um but it's too close i guess i'm not accounting for all the times that it doesn't happen but the times that it does it feels too precise for it to be too close to the event of talking about it to get the ad, right? The only reason I would say it's not precise all the time is that there's not an ad campaign for that topic at that time when you're doing it in that location. Right. Yeah. Because ultimately that's true. Somebody has to be paying for it. Right. Yeah. So I think that's true. the ad campaigns are, they'll be as specific as they can when they're running it. Yeah. For sure. That makes sense. And it's, it's too odd. It's too weird. So it's just listening. And but, there's been bugs like Samsung televisions. Um, if you turned on the, the red light or you could turn it off it, it's still yeah. active listened if you if you used your voice to turn it on which means it never turned off it's always listening and then they found out there was a bug for that and um sure i was listening was to a, a podcast of the nsa knew this yeah. bug and they would walk into a place they wanted to bug and they would say oh they have a samsung television let's Just, sleep boys yeah. And then all they did was yeah, and then all they did you're right, and then all they did was turn that always always listening feature on yeah. on the TV, and bam, right. there you go. That's it. We don't have to plan a device. So <laughs> what's like now, the phones are doing it for us too. I was, I was going to say, what's insane is that Facebook a while back, and they said that they stopped. They were developing on a thing that reads your thoughts, and to me, like it's like I I think this is where we're going to go to a point where for advertising purposes, we're going to create as many devices that collect as much data as possible and if they could have a device that could literally read our minds they would already of course they're going to build it you know and that to me is kind of scary because this is where i think but there's nothing like we could do about it. you know i this definitely is, they have enough information they can predict your next move with which with is crazy it's like that right which is with, kind of what they're saying with that yeah, yeah yeah that is what they're saying they're saying they can predict like i'm saying they 
they know you want to buy something before you know you want to buy it. Because we're <laughs> creatures of habit. All of it, we all follow this. You know, if you follow me around, you'd realize real quickly my daily routine is the same, you know. Right. Um, I do the same things, eat the same things, go to the same places. Very rare that I change. So easy to predict what I want to buy. That's pretty much. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Elon did it again. Brazil bans X for refusing to comply with Supreme Court orders. I mean, come on, Eli, Elon, whatever your name is, what are you doing? Uh, but all kidding aside, I do have a spicy take on that. Okay, I get it. You, uh, Alexandre de Morales, Moraes, however you pronounce the name, I apologize. Um, yeah, you have with Elon, by why punish your people at $8,900 a pop if they get spotted using Twitter in their country. And that so to me, crazy. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> First of all, how rich are your average Brazilians that they have $8,900 to like, <laughs> I'm just saying, but to me, this is the wild part. It's like, you have an issue with a service. Okay, you're going to deal with that. But how are your, like, like, and you have the power to make it illegal, which is already, too okay, interesting. But then you go that extra step, any people that just happen to be uh, bystander using the app gets fined $8,900. That's to me is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Well, you know, for the longest time, they told people, you just build your own service if you don't like the way the current service operates. Elon went out and bought one. And now <laughs> he's going to take his ball and go home. I don't think he's coming back to Brazil. Yeah. Um, and there's one thing that I will also say that I don't blame him for doing. The reason he got banned is because he wouldn't create a legal representative representative in the country. The month before he had pulled all of the employees for X out of the country because this guy was going to arrest somebody. <laughs> and so like, yeah, who's crazy. taking that job anyway? He's probably thinking like, I can't hire anyone to, to take the bullet here. And so like, um, I, I do think that, um, he has the the freedom to say, you know what? I really care about Brazil. Yeah, um, he does. But then he, that's not what he did, though, is it? He didn't say, I'm pulling out of Brazil. No, no, no. He tried to basically break the law of Brazil, and then he got kicked out. Well, yeah, <laughs> there is a out. big difference. Yeah. Well, he could, have, big difference. he could have complied with the order and said, I'm going to make a legal representative in the country. He said, no, I'm not doing that because they were going to arrest that person for whatever they were. He deemed right. that some information that they wanted access to he wasn't going to shut down those current accounts in, in Brazil because he thought there was freedom of speech. He stand on the ground. Whether I don't know what's true. I don't know what the, the actual tweets were. And so I think that's what the argument's over. And then they kicked him out of the country and he said, okay. I think the thing is like, he, so Brazil has whatever rules they have, right? Agree with them, disagree with them, doesn't matter. If you choose to do business there, you've got to, you've got to work within those rules. He wants to, but and, and Elon, being Elon, has his own set of rules which he wants to use no matter where he is in the world. He just wants to use his own set of rules. And if they don't want to go for that, he'll just keep doing it anyway. And then he'll get fined. He'll get whatever. If he goes to Brazil, they would arrest him. Yeah. I'm sure of it. Yeah. They arrested the telegram guy in France. The other right. Day. Right. Um, so like, I don't know. So like part of me says, you know, they did this with WhatsApp. So WhatsApp got banned in Israel, uh, not Israel, but it banned in brazil for one day and the people went on the streets and ride it over west up <laughs> and, they, and they put it back <laughs> and so like i guess no one cared that x was was kicked out of brazil because they, they didn't ride in the streets so yeah they don't well here's what they did gone. do you see what they did do no I they all moved that. to blue sky and threads well blue yeah i had two million signups in two days over the weekend <laughs> that's good yeah. for blue sky they I mean, had over it was over a million percent or something more users in brazil than they had before like it, it was like through the roof so Blue Sky is like they couldn't barely handle the um the, the, the amount of new servers or the yeah. amount of new like hardware they had to like put into place to account for all these new people. Two million in two days is crazy. And I do agree with the fact that if your country has rules and somebody else doesn't want to fo follow them, you have the right to ban that service. But I don't I see like you know why punish the people of that service. And I get and yeah, that's, and that's I, yeah. I agree with that part too. It's like, just let it happen. Yeah. Like don't, I mean, threatening, cause that's what it is. It becomes a threat, doesn't yeah. it? It's a threat of a, of a punishment. Like um, you, yeah. I'm sure they'll, they'll play that out. Somebody's going to be unlucky, right? They said, if you use a VPN and access it, because all they're doing is the way the country's banning it is they're making all the ISPs basically yeah. say, you can't, 
go you can't publish this site right you can't show this site to anybody so people obviously are like i'll just use a vpn and go around it so then they said well if you're going to do that we're going to fine you eighty nine hundred dollars that's the that's the punishment with the exception of by the way guess which isp isn't stopping it starlink starlink <laughs> uh, of course but, but of course i mean he's just he's just tacking on his fines at this point i mean he's, he's just not like, gonna pay him he's like he's not gonna them pay up him in brazil well he might not pay them but what's going to happen eventually is he's gonna he's gonna shoot himself in the foot because he's going to have to go to Brazil or something at some point. Oh, no, forget it. He's not somebody's really... going to have to go to Brazil or something. Or something's going to have to happen. I may not be a lawyer, but I don't know for sure he should never step his foot in Brazil. <laughs> he ever, shouldn't. Ever, but you know he's ever. like, but he's not that guy. Oh, you know what I mean? God. He's the guy who I guarantee you thinks he probably Dude, can show up there. All right. Uh, if we fight, watch the news at some point in the future and it's like Elon gets arrested <laughs> in Brazil, oh my God. It then was it's, a, it then, was, it was then a black, let it happen. It was yeah. a black bag job, is what it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh we saw that. Maybe. We saw that movie in Batman where he went and got the guy out of China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, all of a sudden Elon shows up from Brazil. Like, what's he doing there? Like, yeah. that's weird. He just showed Why up on the there? street. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, I, I, I do think there is a healthy pushback on some of the government overreach. So, I do think Europe overreaches on a lot of these tech companies. Um, I'm not saying that the tech companies do everything right either. And there's some kind of middle ground that we've got to get to. But like a lot of times the the regulation, because really what, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, I could be wrong about this because I haven't read everything about it. The tweets were about the election that this guy's involved in. And he didn't like the opposing views of some of these people that were saying it. Now, was it misinformation? Was it lies? I have no idea, but he wanted those taken down. And I think that's where Elon's saying, Okay, I believe in free speech, but free speech. But again, it doesn't matter what Elon. Oh, I know exactly. Doesn't matter what Elon believes. His belief. So he just said, "I don't care. I just won't. If you can't do that, then we just won't be over there." He took his ball and went home. Completely. Well, he didn't. I didn't. They grabbed his ball and they kicked it out of the park, and he (laughs) ran after it. Let me say this. (laughs) Either way, he's not coming back. (laughs) Being (laughs) devil's advocate, and thank God nobody rioted because. Twitter like left Brazil, but if it was, we shouldn't we shouldn't write over Twitter get leaving from anywhere. But I'm just gonna say, how many people voted on that decision versus one person made it? And to me, hmm. I think that's a scary so, part where you have. So so here's that. the thing: there was a follow up though. I did see okay. this today. There was a follow up. It got pushed to the Brazilian Supreme Court, who up who upheld the decision. So while one guy made the decision, their Supreme Court down there did also uphold it. So okay. it's more than one person at this point. Five. I guess. And not but again, it's like whatever rules they have, they have. No, no, like, no yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Like, choose just, to live with them or not. Yeah, yeah, like, making jokes. I think like I'm basically at the camp where we have a rule, or it could be I have a rule. You don't like it, you don't get to do business with us. That's basically, and I, I, to me, that is that's the freedom it. of speech. It's like, hey, we have our rules, you have your rules. If we don't agree, we don't have to work together. It doesn't right. matter what it is. At, at the end of the, uh, you know, it's it's that that's how it should be, right? And that's always what we've said about the EU, right? We feel like the EU are always going too far in having too many rules yeah. and too many hoops you have to jump through. And eventually companies will say, I'm not going to do business there. I think this is slightly different. I think I don't understand the um um I didn't read all of the tweets they were talking about, but basically Brazil is trying to crack down on like online misinformation. Yeah. That's part of this. So they're saying, Well, these guys, whatever their tweets are, like it's mis- we we class this misinformation, therefore we want off the platform. And he just refused to do it in, yeah, you know, in the in the name of free speech. Yeah, but it is insane because, like, with AI and even some of the stuff, like, like for instance, I don't care like how political people are, um, because I'm just like whatever. I'm, like, I'm a very simple person. Do my cats have food? Okay, then my life is good. <laughs> like, so I don't get involved in those discussions. But the fact that even like Elon posted a fake video about uh, Kamala like doing the speech, and I was like. That is like the sign of like, here's how this information gets propagated. And to me, that confirms like this big like fear of mine is that every social network at some point is going to have these embedded, like it's already happening, like misinformation of, you know, whoever, and we won't be able to tell the difference. How do you navigate 100%. any social network that has ability to have posts like that? And where does it take us? Like for me, for instance, I just don't, <laughs> don't trust anything on social as things like it's, and i it's think a that's joke. the new it's a joke. yeah that's Everything the new joke. i think that's the new attitude and that's the new way that a lot of people now think about social media there was a point back in kind of like 2020 and before 
where social media kind of peaked and it was like it was harmful because people were like there was stuff on there and it was like oh it just got spread around as being truth i think these days almost everything you see on it you question i think a lot more people now question it They're like eh, i don't buy that <laughs> like you have your own kind of judgment on it and it's like everything that you you read you're like that's is it real is it fake does it matter like I just have a better judgment of it. And people just dismiss it more than they yeah. ever have. And I think that's the attitude. I know I certainly feel yeah, that way now more than ever. Me. Yeah, yeah, I dismiss everything. It's but just like I have to go to some third parties if I see something and be like, oh, let me go read about that. I know now not just to trust the headline on social media. And I think a lot more people are going that way now than they ever have. And I hope so. And it's not having the same effect yeah. it's had in the past. And I'm I the same way with happening. you, Kevin. I, I I look at something and I'm like, oh, that's outlandish. And it doesn't matter if it's right or left leaning. No, whatever. it doesn't matter. It's and if, just, if I'm like, if it's important to me, then I'll go go find a source to say, is that true or whatever? Because someone yeah. will say, here's what I'll do. Someone will give me this. Hey, did you hear about this? And immediately I'll go to my news site and see, is that a headline? It's not a headline. I'm like, right. it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you know that? How do you know it's not true? I'm like, well, you know, these guys would report on that, you know, you know. I think there was a rumor that Joe Biden was dead one weekend. I mean, you know, and someone came in and said, you heard Joe Biden died? It wasn't on the TV. Yeah. Yeah. Where would you read that? Let me guess. Facebook. President. (laughs) What's crazy is that even though like me, I'm the same way with you. Like I'm like, everything is BS, especially at this point. But sometimes like they get you. And then because is it like because of like you wanted to believe that this thing is like real? Uh, So I'll give you one example. Sure. There is like confirmation bias. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, it's it's funny because even I who is like, oh, no, I'm never going to I'm just going to treat everything as BS. So uh, there's a who's got talent show. I forgot where where it was. They had like this skit where the dude like puts on like a horse head and he's a horse, but he's not because it's just a joke. But somebody used AI to make him transform into an actual horse. And like an idiot, I saw that and I was blown away because I thought, why would, who's got talent lie? That's why awesome. would they do that? And then I was like, okay, anybody could take a clip from anyone and yeah. doctor it to be whatever you want. And to me, like that yeah. was so crazy because there are certain sources that I feel like they wouldn't lie. But the fact what social media AI, like uh, thing allows you to, for anybody, you, me, my grandma, take any footage and make it, whatever it is, you know, originally not supposed to be, make it different, like whatever. And how, like, and there's no real check, you know what I mean? And so right. to me, like, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be impossible. It's always the, the best fakes are like 90% true, right? Exactly. Like you say, if you took, if you took 90% of the who's got talent show and you had 10% of, of, of fake, the whole got thing me. therefore must be true, right? So you're selling yeah. on that little like extra bit yeah. that you've put in there. Yes. And it could even be as simple as like replacing one line that somebody said or something. That's and that's where it gets kind of scary, right? We could take a whole. Let's say that we take a Donald Trump um, rally convention speech, right? And we take it and we make it ninety nine percent what he said, and then we change one line in there, right? I guarantee you, most people will believe that that entire hundred percent thing happened. Well, that's it for this episode of the Not No Podcast. A couple of things I can ask you to do: please let a friend know about the podcast, and please leave us a rating and a review wherever you feel like. Uh, leaving that for us. That'd be great. If you're watching on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to get notifications of all new episodes. You can also drop us an email to the not no podcast at AOL.com or drop us a text using the link in the description. And we'll see everybody next week. I'm talking about my day, just a little chat, but my phone's got ears. Did you know that? Whisper in the wind, now it's on the screen. Ads pop up for things I've never seen. I didn't search, I didn't type But somehow they got me right Is it magic or is it wrong? That my phone's been listening all along Hey, hey, what's the cost of privacy? When everything I say becomes what I need to see Tell me, is it legal, is it fine? Or have I signed away my mind? Listen close, they're listening close
with those ads, they're everywhere. Is it creepy or just fate that my phone can't seem to wait? Hey, hey, what's the cost of privacy? When everything I say becomes what I need to see. Tell me, is it legal? Is it fine? Or have I signed away my mind? Listen close. Service or a breach when our voices are within their reach. Listen close, they're listening close. They're listening close. The late night talk secrets told suddenly. The being sold becomes what I need to see. Tell me, is it legal? Is it fine? Or have I signed away my mind? Listen close. Listening close.